Hi, everybody, and I definitely didn't record the first, like, two minutes of this without having my mic on, so, yay. But it's chapter 1030, another weekly release from Oda, as long as he wants to keep releasing these weekly. Uh, it's also another late video on my behalf. Apologies. Um, but it's chapter 1030, The Impermanence of All Things, which is a reference to the opening of the epic poem Hiki Monogatari. Which, I have not read that, so I don't know what it is. But, yeah. Um, just based off the name, it's the impermanence of all things. Um, and going directly into the chapter, we are apparently getting an alliance between Scratchman, Apu, X Drake, and the numbers 1 through 3. I did not expect this, but we're getting it. Um, so yeah, there's not a whole lot to hit on with that. But moving on, there is some stuff to hit on with what's happening in the stairs between the first and second floor. Um, our group of Usopp, Nami, Speed, and a bunch of other people run across Kinemon's legs just running. <laughs> um, and Usopp mistakes it for Torstless Yokai, but then they identify it as Kinemon because of his fart speaking technique. And Nami uses the crescent on him to let him know that they have, that he has found an ally. And then they go off because Kinemon survived due to Law cutting him in half during Punk Hazard. Uh, it turns out Kaido just hit him right in the same exact spot. So he got cut in half. Um, which, this really hits on the fact that most One Piece fans don't hate the lack of death in the series. They just hate the amount of fake out death scenes we have gotten. So, just add one more to the pile. But this is actually understandable compared to, like, Pell during Alabasta. But then, transitioning really nicely from the Kinemon stuff, we have Orochi and Kanjiro. And Kinemon thinks to himself, that was Orochi's voice, but he was beheaded. He seems unaware of Kanjiro's demise. Which leads back to when, uh, you know, Kanjiro kind of got killed. Or we thought so, but he's still clinging on to life, which Orochi points out with the sounds like you're at the brink, Kondro, and Kondro says it's the finale, and Orochi tells him, who cares who wins, let them all be consumed by the Kurizumi's clan's vengeance. Cast all the stragglers in the castle into the abyss of hell, drag them as low as our brethren, trapped in their graves. Free their souls, Kondro, free us in a final blaze of glory. And Kondro replies with, as you wish, please enjoy my final show, the Suicide Pact of the Kurizomi Clan. Kazenbo. I don't know how to pronounce it, but I think it's Kazenbo. Which, we also get a flutter, or a futter, something, flutter. Uh, Kondro's probably dead now, like, properly dead. Which we've been waiting for for a while. Um, and apparently this Kazenbo is just basically a walking inferno that's burning everything that it touches. Uh, cutting to Mononosuke, we have him saying that all he can do is make as many tiny flame clouds as possible, given that his job is to stop Onigashima from falling as Yamato takes the explosives away, or tries to disable them. And we have... Then we have a really nice, about half-page spread, almost a full-page spread, actually. I'm just checking up on some of our cast members. So we have Brooke and Robin, and I believe some of the waiters. Um, then we cut to CP0, and then we cut to Marco, and then to a few of the scabbards. And then on the bottom half of the page, we get a very nice spread of Sanji versus Queen, which shows that Queen did catch up to Sanji after he ran away last chapter. On the other side, we have Zoro versus King, showing that is still a fight that's going on. And in the middle, we have Luffy and Kaido. Which, yes, that is kind of our main fight that we are waiting for the resolution of. And we have a quote from Orochi saying, The Kosugi forces and the Emperors will be undone by their own hubris. I know all about it, Kaido. Your massive armory in the basement, stocked with weapons I provided. Light it up, Kanjiro. Blow them to smithereens. Now hurry back, Fukuro Kujo, so we can escape. This pirate war is no longer any of our business. Which... It did remind me of a fight that I forgot, I believe, last chapter, when I was going through all the fights we have left. I did forget Raizo versus Fukuro Kujo, like an idiot, but that is the final fight that I forgot. 
Then we get a very brief check-in with Yamato showing that they are still trying to get the explosives, I believe, to like destroy them or disable them or something. We get a bunch of the Beast Pirates asking where they're going, and Yamato is thinking, The armory is in the very bottom of the castle. I'm not sure I'll make it in time, Mononosuke. You've got to slow the island down, even if it's just by a little bit. Which very much puts in mind what our character's goals are to prevent Unagashima from blowing up. And that is basically just Yamato and Mononosuke making sure that it doesn't do that. And then we get interrupted by Big Mom using Ikuko Sovereignty. And just blowing kids' metal bits apart. Um, then we get a single panel of Yamato showing that they are still alive. They didn't get hit by that. But then we cut to the rest of the chapter, and the meat of the discussion that's been happening from this is Big Mom versus Kid and Law. And it very quickly transitions into what the meat of this chapter is. Kid asks, Hey Trafalgar, have you awakened your ability yet? And Law replies, I'm not used to it yet. I'd only use it if I were near death. It burns too much energy to use in a real battle. And Kid is on the same page. Saying, mine's the same, but we're not getting anywhere like this. You'll need to back me up and play that ace. Which shows that, like, we've been shown that Kid is not very much of a team player, and neither is Law. They're both very solo players. Law a bit less than Kid. He can work with a team. But they are finally teaming up to beat Big Mom. And then we get a very cool display of both of their new abilities. Law uses a new ability, Kroom. And anesthesia, which seems to be an attack, like a stab that doesn't make you bleed, as he says, that incision is harmless. But Kroom influences your body in other ways. And then he uses an attack very similar to, I believe, Countershock, just the way it's displayed, named Shockwave. Which, again, seems to be like a very internalized version of Countershock. So it shows, like, Big Mom actually bleeding and smoke coming from her mouth. Which someone points out, Mom was bleeding. And she, um, she calls Law a brat, and then Law, and then Kid, sorry, says you could use some more magnetism. And then uses his new ability, a sign. And then we get, I believe, Zeus saying, no, not Zeus. The new, the new cloud, sorry. But we get someone saying, I'm stuck to you, Mama. And then Mama says, what the, it's like i become a magnet. And then a bunch of the Beast Pirates had their weapons drawn in. And then the steel from the beams of the towers are being ripped out towards Big Mom, basically creating a big metal ball. And Big Mom looks straight terrified of this. And Kid bosses Law around, saying, Trafalgar, get me out of here. Which brings back, and this brings me back to what I was saying earlier with Law kind of being not a team player, but he still is to an extent. Uh, he says, don't tell him what to do, and then I believe he uses shambles to go, like, move them away. And Kid's new ability is called Punk Crash, which goes in line with his Punk Vice, Punk, uh, Punk Vice. He has a bunch of moves called Punk, I'm blanking on all of them now. But yeah, his whole thing is Punk. So, this is their new Awaken abilities. So we have... Seemingly an entire new list of abilities for Law, because we don't see him actually open up a room. He just uses Kroom, which seems to be a new replacement for Room. I mean, not a replacement, but like, almost like a partnership of abilities. Like it, a localized Room, I guess. Um, which is what he uses for Anesthesia. But all in all, this chapter is a... Uh, um, pretty hype i don't think we anticipated law and kid awakening their abilities um i believe and correct me if i'm wrong the only awakened devil fruits we have seen up to this point are doflamingo who introduced the entire idea of awakening devil fruits katakuri who turned his paramecia basically into a logia type or it was effectively a logia type with his foresight and then these two which, using Oda's style of, I forget what it's called, but he does a thing within a chapter where he can build something up in the beginning, like introduce the idea, then he builds it up in the middle, and then he actually executes it on in the end. We could be seeing a multi-chapter version of that, where he introduces the idea, reintroduces the idea, 
of Delfruit Awakenings in this chapter. Next chapter we could get some discussion on it, given that we do have Law and Kid who need to still talk about their abilities. We can't just have them talk, just have them. So we're going to need them to actually, like, explain it a bit more, maybe? But next chapter should be a little bit of an explanation, in a way, of Awakenings. And then 1032 could very well be the chapter where we see Luffy actually awaken his fruit. Which is something we've been waiting for practically since uh, Dress Rosa against Do Flamingo when he mentioned it. So, we'll see how that goes. That's just my prediction for the next few chapters. Um, and I guess, yeah. That's all this chapter, all this chapter was, but I've reviewed the entirety of the chapter. So, yeah. Um, there's nothing else to talk about. Um, if you have any ideas for what could happen in the next few chapters, if you think that, if you want to, if you like the video, or if you're new here, subscribe. If you like the video, comment below, hit the like button, I really appreciate it. It's Sunday, it's Halloween, my brain is fried. So yeah, next, we, we have a chapter next week too, I forgot to mention that. We're not on break. So, next week, I do anticipate my chapter review to be either on Friday or Saturday. Don't be surprised when it's on Sunday again. Apparently, I'm setting a precedent for that. But as Kid finishes this fight, um, I'll see you guys next time. Okay, guys. Bye.